There is no part of Miles Morales that makes you feel more like a young Spider-Man than these completely optional side missions, and frankly, they're the best part of the story. Now, that may sound odd, since there's really only four of them, four and a half if you count taking this cat out for a joyride, but I fully believe these missions encapsulate everything charming about Miles despite some issues. Since I recently made a video taking a dump on this game's main story, I thought I'd try and balance out the Spider-Verse a bit and highlight why these missions are so good, how they help build up Miles as a hero, and why they serve his story far better than the main campaign. Straight up, I think these missions should have been mandatory, and I think the first one should have been the first mission of the entire game. It places the overarching theme in sharp focus, establishes how the city views Miles, and sets up his amateur operation with Genki. So what the hell am I talking about? Of course, a cat burglary. Literally. Tio's bodega was robbed, and for some reason a lunatic also stole his cat, Spider-Man who Tio explicitly makes clear was named after the real Spider-Man. That's a perfect way to start up this story. Miles may as well be as significant as this guy's cat, literally named Spider-Man as a joke, which is how Tio views Miles. He's even fully dismissive of Miles when he offers to help. He essentially just sighs and says, if you want. So Miles takes off to find the thieves with the help of his man in the chair, and as they piece together information, their dynamic shines. Miles and Genki feel a lot more like amateurs, kinda getting into the swing of things for the first time, but they're still kids with a naive confidence. During this mission, Genki makes some dorky joke that makes Miles laugh, and he has to tell his buddy to shut up so he can concentrate. That's damn cute. This feels way more like how they should interact all the time. Genki is intelligent and clever here, but he's not some hyper genius like how the main story sometimes forces him to be. The conversation a couple missions later about Genki reading Jane Eyre for homework personally cracked me up. They feel like lame high schoolers balancing being street level heroes rather than uber geniuses saving the entire city from nanotech and experimental fuel bombs. I know this is a game and big explosions have to happen, but I appreciated the working out of our garage, learning on the go, prototype Spider-Man operation they set up, and I personally think that's where Miles thrives. You don't really get to see this side of Miles just in the main campaign. There, he and Genki feel too established, already battling insane supervillains, and I think that does a disservice to Miles' growth. Speaking of, let's get back to the mission. It plays out simply enough. Go to place, beat up bad guys, get back cat. Nothing outrageous, and it shouldn't be. A personal highlight for me was the lunatic who was already so protective of the cat. Anyway, Miles rescues Spider-Man and returns him to Teo, who is so grateful. He doesn't outright praise Miles, but he shows his gratitude and respect by calling him Spider-Man. Boom! Perfect first step, slowly winning the hearts of the new neighborhood one person at a time. Then the main campaign can get cooking. Although, why rush when there's already a fun mystery brewing in Harlem? Miles and Genki are on the case in a little low-stakes neighborhood hijinks, investigating the larger operation behind the thieves, which takes them down a really interesting path. The next mission picks up at Feast with Gloria and- I'm Steph, Gloria's girlfriend. I'm volunteering at Feast, or what's left of it. While I do like this mission, the horrible dialogue with Steph's self-introduction highlights something that can't go unsaid. While Miles has a clear personality when dealing with Genki, and another big character I'll mention in a bit, the characters he's doing missions for bring nothing out of him. The dialogue can feel very matter-of-fact, very video game assignment-y. You just get the bare bones info you need. It's not a huge deal, but it is noticeable that Miles is entirely unaffected by the specific person he's speaking to. So yeah, he does his thing and helps out Feast, more people are starting to like Spider-Man while advancing the overall mystery that he and Genki are chasing down. Next up, things get a little insane. This mission starts off as some good old fashioned helping out the neighborhood. Local businesses' inventories have been robbed by the same organization behind the previous missions, and when Spider-Man goes to investigate, it turns out this kindly old lady has been kidnapped! A pretty out there thing to happen, but she seems completely unaffected by it soon after. So 
I guess she's used to it? Much like the previous missions, this one gets Spider-Man on the good side of Harlem, except now at a block-wide scale. It's a cool escalation, but at this point, it was fairly clear the side mission NPCs exist more as set dressing than actual characters, and I guess that's to be expected in smaller side stories like this, but I would have appreciated just a bit more meat. The mission variety itself, though, is refreshing. It would have been easy to have Miles doing similar beats for each of these, but the game manages to keep things fresh in an almost tutorial-like fashion by mixing up the gameplay situations. The first mission is essentially a hideout takedown, but rather than the repetitive waves of overwhelming goons, Miles makes his way in through a mix of stealth and combat while chasing after the cat and establishing the enemy forces. The second mission does the opposite taking advantage of the open world and Miles' secret identity. You need to speak with Feast volunteers, then track pipes across the city to fix some valves while beating up the occasional gang of goons. The third mission is perhaps the weakest, but still unique. Miles needs to stealthily investigate the kidnapping of Camilla, free her from the trunk of a speeding getaway car, then eavesdrop on criminals at the docks before bashing them all to bits. The missions take Miles all over the city and give the player unique situations that avoid repetition. The only thing that feels a little samey is the docks at the end of Mission 3 and at the start of Mission 4. Speaking of, here we get to the one character from the side story that I do see brought up on a semi-regular basis, Haley. Some of you out there are absolutely all in on a Haley and Miles romance, and the game has fun teasing out that idea. She's surprisingly well integrated into the beginning and ending of the main story with the Spider-Man mural, and even in the side missions. We first see her when we're returning the cat to Tio's, and Miles has a mildly awkward run-in with Haley on the way in. Even before this last mission gets started, when Genki tells him who he's going to meet, Miles gets all doughy. It's obvious he's got a crush, so I totally understand where people are coming from. She actively helps Miles out, she's got an outsider artistic vibe to her, I get why Miles would like her, and her inclusion is at least something. Personally, I'm indifferent, but I'm open to being convinced to care in the future. Plus, of all the neighborhood characters, Haley is the one Miles has the most distinct interactions with. Unlike his interchangeable personality between Camilla and Gloria, it's clear who Miles is talking to just through his dialogue and tone. So, Miles gets moving on the assignment from Haley, and it's this mission that brings everything together. Wilson Fisk the Kingpin, has been behind all the schemes messing with Harlem. It's fun that this little side story does have some serious stakes and drops the Kingpin directly into the plot with dialogue and a full-blown interaction with Miles. It's unclear what exactly Kingpin's plan was. I guess undermining Harlem to slowly get his grip around the neighborhood and rule it as his new criminal empire when he eventually gets out of prison? The game doesn't focus too much on the details, but setting up a future conflict with Kingpin and Miles is a brilliant idea. He's pretty much just the tutorial villain for the first game, but I think having Miles take him on in a more serious conflict down the line would do wonders for his character especially if you keep it centered around Harlem. In that way, these missions act like a really great prologue to something potentially fantastic down the line. And unlike the other NPCs, Miles very much has a particular attitude toward Kingpin, and his presence holds some serious weight for Genki as well. To be honest, I think this reveal is the highlight of these side missions. It ends round one of Miles indirectly taking on a major Spider-Man villain, while setting up a potential conflict down the line, but it also solidifies Miles as a protector of his new neighborhood, while also teasing out a romantic connection with Haley, and providing my favorite suit in the game as a little reward. Everything about how these side missions wrap up is simple and wholesome. It feels very personal and unique to Miles' experience, both as a new Spider-Man and as a new resident of Harlem. After replaying these missions, I honestly believe they should have just been mandatory. The first one should have been the first mission overall. Then, after the original first mission with Peter and the subsequent hologram training nonsense, the rest of these neighborhood missions should have taken priority. Before Miles has to deal with Roxxon and the Tinkerer, I think it would have been so much more meaningful to the entire story to complete this mini campaign immediately establishing who Miles is, how he's growing into his role, 
and how the city feels about him. Then the chaos can ensue after the player already built a connection to the neighborhood, which is what's at stake during the main campaign, rather than keeping the residents optionally on the periphery. Then there's that pesky half mission I mentioned earlier. I think this puts a nice bow on the events of this game, and serves as a final reminder of how important Miles has become to the neighborhood. This mission is only available after the main campaign and side missions are complete, and that makes total sense. Rather than sticking a miner in his undies and sending him out into the cold, this game gives Miles an indestructible cat to zip around Manhattan with as an endgame pat on the head. Despite how many times this cat would have been crushed to death, it is super cute, and I love how it can actually join in on some of the takedown animations. Most importantly for the story though, the cat represents Miles' full acceptance into the community, and I just think it's a fun way to visualize that. Even more so than adding him to a mural that originally just featured Peter. It's entirely unique to him, and serves as a constant reminder that can travel with you throughout the city, rather than a landmark that's easy to miss while zipping around the least engaging portion of the map. No other time throughout this game did I feel more like Miles Morales, an up-and-coming amateur Spider-Man struggling to balance the awkwardness of adolescence and growing responsibilities in a new town, than in these side missions. I don't think they're perfect, but I think they do their job, and I hope a more fleshed out version of these neighborhood style missions continues to pop up in the future. What'd you think about these? Are you one of those Haley X Miles shippers? I know you're out there! Anyone else surprised by the Kingpin's inclusion? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and take care.